it's an objective fact that Fallout New Vegas is the best Fallout game to be released in 2010. While the story is thought by some to be better than Fallout 3 or 4's, there's more to the story of the Courier than what's in the vanilla game. Can you beat Fallout New Vegas' Dead Money DLC without taking any damage? This run is different than any challenge I've done so far for a very simple reason. And you probably already know what it is. This is downloadable content. It's meant to be played during or after you beat the main story. Which means you're not expected to do it as soon as you leave Doc Mitchell's house. Because the challenge isn't to beat the DLC at level 1, I did something that may be controversial. I used console commands to level me up to level 20, which is the minimum level suggested for starting dead money. In an effort to keep things somewhat fair, rather than dumping all my points into skills that I'd usually rely on, like speech, sneak, or guns, I decided to get every skill up to 40, then I put the 9 leftover points into my tag skills, the skills that I just said I'd normally rely on. You're probably wondering about perks. Well, I chose Confirmed Bachelor, Fortune Finder, Lady Killer, and Intense Training, with Educated being the last perk I chose so that I'd get its effects moving forward. Then, to try to balance things out, which in retrospect didn't matter, like, at all, I removed Confirmed Bachelor and Lady Killer via console commands. The entire point of this is to go into Dead Money with an as average character as possible. Into the game, I started out by making my way to the abandoned Brotherhood of Steel bunker to begin the DLC. I did get sexually assaulted by a group of Cazadors on the way there, but the DLC hadn't started yet, so it doesn't matter. I went down the ladder, got attacked with gas, and woke up in front of a fountain with a collar around my neck and an old man giving me orders. My mission was simple, find and recruit three others to help Daddy Elijah get into the Sierra Madre Casino. There are only a few problems. 1. The thick cloud of poisonous gas. 2. The collar around my neck that will explode if I take a step in the wrong direction. And 3. The ghost people who, just like almost every other monstrosity to grace the Mojave Wasteland and its nearby areas, are a result of the experiments done by brains in jars in a giant crater. I also have almost no armor, a laughably small amount of weapons to work with, and no healing items. Oh, and there's the whole, any damage of any kind kills me because I set my max health to one thing. So, not the worst situation I found myself in. With the extra damage inflicted from stealth attacks, the hollow rifle can take out a ghost person with a single shot. After I found out I wasn't completely fucked, I picked up some Chuck E. Cheese tokens from a fountain, entered the Villa Police Station, and exploded for the first time. The beeping collar is significantly more annoying than the red cloud, but it's present throughout the entire run, so I'm not going to be a little bitch and complain about it anymore. I continued searching the police station for a way to free the dog god, found a helmet which is irrelevant since I couldn't take any damage in the first place, picked up a police pistol that would allow me to save my hollow rifle for tougher foes, went down to the basement, looted more stuff, got the dog command tape, cautiously approached the holding cell, played the tape, and initiate a dialogue with the beast. And let me tell you, that dog has a lot to say. After about 15 minutes of back and forth, I convinced God to come along with me on my stupid adventures in hopefully not dying, and was off to find Dean Domino. The trick to dealing with the ghost people is to, if possible, sit back and let a companion, like God Dog, deal with them. Sometimes he actually kills them, sometimes he just knocks them out, which means you have to cut their limbs off or blow them to heck. Not difficult if you have a cosmic knife or something, but it's still something to keep in mind. Dean Domino is located in the residential district, beyond the red cloud. Luckily, filling your lungs with the thick, toxic red cloud is more like drowning than blasting your face with hot steam. You can survive for a bit inside the cloud before it does its damage. I killed quite a few more ghost people, collected more tokens, disarmed some traps, took a seat next to this freak, and the next thing I knew, I was sitting on a bomb. But I called Domino's and ordered a bluff, which worked, because in order to shower the moon with the blood from my ass, Domino would need a powerful explosive. If I die, he dies. After surprisingly less conversation than I got from God Dog, Dean agreed to wait at the fountain like a good ghoul while my dog and I went off to find Christine. More ghost folks were ended, my collar did some excited beeping, and I soon found myself inside the villa clinic. 
Next stop, New Adventures of Horribly Traumatized from Days of Medical Torture, Christine. And just when you thought there couldn't be any more things to mildly inconvenience me, the game introduces us to holograms, imaginary people made of light who feel no pain and can't be stopped. Your only option is to avoid them. The cunt hair-sized silver lining is that when there are holograms, there are usually terminals to set their path. And if you're wondering, even God Dog is frightened by the light people. After a bit of wandering around aimlessly, I came dangerously close to being offed by the Cyclops wannabe, found a key to get into the basement, which allowed me to shut off power to the building, find Christine, and start playing the worst game of charades ever. Several rounds of charades later, I convinced Christine to meet God Dog, Dean Domino, and myself at the fountain in the center of town. Once the gang was back together, Elijah explained the plan. I need to get the mental patient, the mute, and the attractive guy into position in order to trigger the gala event, which will let us all join hands and walk into the casino together, or something to that effect. I chose to start with Dino, because why not? He needs to get to a specific rooftop in Puesta del Sol South. By now, dealing with a few ghost people isn't too bad, as long as I'm dealing with them one-on-one. -on -one. A group of them is a different story. Believe it or not, the hard part here wasn't the ghost people, or the cloud, or my lackadaisical attitude towards this whole thing. It was finding the exact rooftop Dean needed to be on. But after some rooftop parkour, I found the right roof and had to convince Dean to stay up there and use his body to complete the circuit. This can be done two ways. The first is to be a gentleman about it and activate two holograms to keep Dean safe. The alternative is to tell Dean that if he doesn't do his goddamn job, you'll shatter his legs and leave him up there. With Dean in place, I went back to the fountain, did more charade bullshit with Christine, and we were off to the Puesta del Sol switching station. There are a few spots with the red cloud, but overall getting there was really easy. To get into the actual switching station, you need a repair skill of 60 or three electrical box fuses. The box fuses are marked on your map, so they're not difficult to find. With them in hand, Christine and I headed into the switching station, I found an automatic rifle, destroyed a turret with a spear, did more but less impressive parkour, and found an elevator. Once again, there are two ways to go about this. I chose to be a real prick by promising Christine that I wouldn't send her down into the basement, then I did it anyway. With the bitch in place, it all came down to God Dog. I had more conversation with God Dog at the fountain, he seemed to know what was going on, dogs do have a good sense of hearing after all, and we were off. He did most of the killing on the way to his position. There are a series of switches that God Dog needs to flip, but he was my first friend in this shithole, so rather than forcing him to do something, I killed two ghost people, rooted around in their bodies until I found food, returned the food to God Dog, and was told by Elijah that it was finally time to trigger the gala event. The end goal here is to flip a switch in a tower in Salida del Sol. Getting there isn't the hard part. What am I saying? That's the hard part. The ghost people are there because they're everywhere, but there's also bear traps all over the place. A lot of the time, they're in the cloud. So while you're focused on getting through the cloud, you get caught in a trap meant for Winnie the Pooh. Eventually, I made it to the courtyard, outmaneuvered a ghost man, got hit with a gas tank, barely avoided getting stuck by a spear, made it to the tower, and flipped a switch to trigger the gala event. The casino was pretty, in a ominous, probably gonna get trapped inside and die a slow death kind of way. With all the commotion from the celebratory fireworks and loud noises, the ghost people are back with a vengeance. I had two options here, again. I could fight my way through them, using most, if not all, of my ammo in the process. The other option is to strip naked and run past them as fast as I can, while also being on the lookout for bear traps. And that's exactly what I did. And it was about as bad as you probably expected. Not awful, but still annoying. After a few runs, I figured out where the enemies are, what bear traps I needed to disarm, and I made my way back to the fountain, entered the Sierra Madre Casino, and saw what Iron Man saw in Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, again, I must do something with each of the three numbskulls I convinced, or threatened, same thing really, into helping me. God Dog was up first. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm an idiot. I spent a solid 30 minutes trying to figure out how to open the door to Cantina Madrid. I destroyed a few emitters for the holograms, I hacked terminals, I read the fucking wiki but I must have had a stroke because I knew I was looking at words but they didn't make any sense. Once I recovered from the stroke, I figured it out. There's a piece of paper on the bar that has a password. It was that simple. I found the key to Cantina Madrid, entered the restaurant, and I died. There's a gas leak in the restaurant. 
and, believe it or not, breathing in gas isn't good. In fact, it does damage. No, this is not good at all. You have about 4 seconds before you die from the gas. Obviously, that's not enough time to shut off three leaking valves. I really thought I met my match here. You cannot proceed without turning off those valves. But once again, speedrunners save the day. So shout out to Kung Cobra for effectively saving this run. There's another way to get into the restaurant's kitchen, through a door that you can't open without a key. How do you get through a door that you can't open? You cheat. Well, sort of. For the first time ever, I have to use the quick save, quick load technique to glitch myself through something in Fallout New Vegas. If you do it this way, the gas hasn't any effect. Why? No idea. Probably something to do with loading. I convinced Dog to sleep, allowing God to take control, which meant that he wasn't going to blow up the entire casino. I then leveled up, killed the few ghost people who'd found their way into the casino, and entered the Tampico Theater to deal with Dean Domino. He was not at all difficult, not really. The speakers and your collar are much more of an annoyance here than they were in the previous section. Pick up a key, talk to Dean, go backstage, turn off a few radios, destroy a few speakers, and talk to Dean one last time. After the dialogue, you must kill him, which isn't great because dodging gunfire is practically impossible. To avoid that, I opened fire immediately, killed him, ransacked his corpse, killed more ghost people, and went to find Christine. She has a voice now, good for her. There's more collar beeping and holograms in this section. I found that if you run past them and get out of their line of sight before they turn red, you're pretty much home free. The assassin suit can be useful here, as it gives you plus 10 to sneak, which helps in escaping the wrath of the holograms. The close quarters fight problem with Dean is much more of a problem here. I saved my automatic rifle for this exact circumstance. So killing Christine was about as easy as accidentally backing over your kid in your driveway. The real problem was one of time and an unfortunate series of quick saves. You must escape the executive suites before your collar explodes, all the while avoiding holograms. I didn't remember the exact way I came in. I got lost a few times. At one point, I even had my hand on the elevator door when my collar went off. I eventually made my escape, killed even more ghost people, and it was finally time for the heist of the century. I had all three music varieties, so I went back to Vera Key's suite, put on her dress, don't you fucking judge me, opened the door that only opens if you play her voice, and arrived at the vault. To discover the secrets of the Sierra Madre vault, I had to barely, and I mean just barely, disable the holograms before they cooked me alive, enter the vault, and speak to Elijah one final time. There were a few things I could do. I could stay in the vault forever, a good idea if the idea of suffocating or starving to death turns you on. I could attempt to kill Elijah in combat. Maybe I could kill him with the mines and the weapons I've got, but there's no way I'd be able to deal with him and the multiple laser turrets at the same time. No, there was only one way I was getting out of the Sierra Madre alive. I convinced Elijah to abandon technology and come to the vault so we could speak face to face. While he was fulfilling his dream of discovering the secrets of what lies within the Sierra Madre vault, I was hightailing it back through the corridors and past the holograms until I got to the vault entrance. By the time I got there, Elijah had realized that I'd trapped him inside. He finally got what he wanted all along. The contents of the vault were his and his alone. I escaped the Sierra Madre vault, went back to the fountain to get a screenshot to commemorate this experience, left Sierra Madre forever, and beat Fallout New Vegas' Dead Money DLC without taking any damage. Remember when I said all the vault contents belonged to Elijah? Yeah, that was a lie, because before I made my escape, I stole one of the gold bars. Take that, you stupid old bitch. And that's gonna do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fall of New Vegas' Dead Money DLC without taking any damage. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at MittenSquad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.